The Lord be with you. Please stand. Welcome to the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of the, at the table with them. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made from pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor? Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these palms. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into the life with, your, with you through the same Jesus Christ, living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Everybody say, Amen. And let's sing all glory, laud, and honor. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, great David's greater Son, who in the Lord's name cometh, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. 
the company of angels are praising thee on high, and we with all creation in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The people of the Hebrews with palms before the wind our praise and prayer and anthems before thee we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Open the gates of the temple. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. To thee before thy passion they sang their hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou didst accept their praises, accept the prayers we bring. Who oh, in all good delightest, thou good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King. Whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now please be seated. This week, as uh, last year, during the height of the COVID epidemic, pandemic, I'm reading from the Gospel of John, and it's because John doesn't get heard very much. We hear from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but we don't hear much from John except on Good Friday. So I've again reserved um, the reading of the Passion uh, for Good Friday, and it is from the Gospel of John. But now so is the rest of the story. So, we've heard about the triumphant entrance of Jesus. But as you know, after that great crowd shouting Hosanna by Good Friday, they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. 
Well, here's the story as it continues from the Gospel of John. Jesus' disciples didn't understand all these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world's gone after him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. This week we face the cross. No getting around it. And we who show up at church week by week, as we should, on the Lord's Day, and eat and drink at the table of the Lord and praise him, is it not true we kind of take that for granted? Most churches have crosses all over the place. We see them, yeah, means Christian. And we wear them around our necks, you know, as jewelry. <laughs> but that cross, can't take it for granted. And I speak to you as people of faith. And doing that, I need to say to you that out of these walls and places like here, that cross really doesn't mean very much other than decoration for whatever reasons. In fact, if the rest of the world that is not trained like we are and not part of the family of faith, that cross can, can be a horror. I think I've told you over the years when I was in seminary, um, we uh, were part of a church that had what's called a rood screen and that rood screen ran across the chancel arch there and uh, beyond it was the high altar and then the choir stalls, that kind of arrangement. Well, on that beam was a giant Jesus hanging on the cross, adored by St. John and by uh, Mary Magdalene. And being a university town, um, lots of people came out of sort of curiosity. The architecture itself was something that you rarely see, you know. Uh, but there was one woman who came with regularity to church. And um, finally, one of the priests said, um, this was an Episcopal church. Finally, one of the priests said, you know, do you, you know, nice to see you week after week after week. Um, do you want to be part of the community? And this woman who was, you know, 20s, early 20s, looked him in the eye and said, I can't get over that. And she pointed at Jesus on the cross. She couldn't get past the profound significance of that and the horror of it. And of course, she had all kinds of questions. How can God the Father kill his own son that way? Did it have to be that way? She was just full of grief, really. And that was getting in the way of her being a Christian. Well, does it get in our way too?
we are people who are born at that font into and from the death of Jesus Christ as well as his resurrection. My dad served in two world wars. He was 16 in 1916 when he went into the trenches, a kid. And in the first world war, fighting in the trenches, I mean, you saw the worst. He was surrounded by kids his own age. The Brits had used up their own people. Now they were calling them from the colonies. And they died horrible deaths. And the ones who survived never, ever took it for granted. Their lives were never taken for granted. We know people, not many left now, from the Second World War. These are people who raised us knowing what sacrifice is. They can identify with the cross. They get it. And 80 years later, that generation has made this world of ours, especially here in North America, so safe, so easy, so prosperous, that it is very, very hard for us to talk and understand sacrifice, so much prosperity. I mean, you know, we joke about the one who wins is the guy who has the most toys when he dies. We live a good life. Now look what's happening in Ukraine. Ukraine is a Christian country, as I keep saying. Very devout people, Ukrainians. Very devout Christians. Look what they're living through. You think you're going to escape and you go to the train station and guess what? You're bombed. And all around you are kids and women, not so many men because the men are fighting, but they're dead. Just wasted. They know sacrifice. That's the way, my brothers and sisters, the world is. It's a fallen world, and we're fallen creatures. And like St. Paul, Paul says, you know, the best things we want to do often just turn into garbage. That's who we are. We may not understand war and sacrifice, and death for a cause, but it's in us too. And that's why we need Holy Week. We have to be reminded of that, especially in the good life we have here. That's why Holy Week is such, you know, a spiritual workout. Every day there's some service, you know, and the big ones are Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and the first Eucharist of Easter. Follow along, would you? Do your best. I know, you've got lives. My life is one of prayer. <laughs> but nonetheless, make an effort. You truly will be rewarded and when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain, I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. We're going to sing that. And it's one of the greatest devotional poems in English, written by a congregational minister in the 1700s, Isaac Watts. And we're going to sing it to the tune that Isaac Watts knew. It's called Rockingham. And I know a lot of you know the other tune that's from the North, North American origin. But this, this is it. 
when I survey that wondrous cross, can we say that? And if we follow through Holy Week, by the time we get to Easter and those alleluias, now, yeah, we can say that with a full heart. When I look at that wondrous cross, I pour contempt on all my pride, where the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering present, far too small, love, so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. You can sing that with a full heart. The world around us all brightens up. Let's sing it. Let's stand and sing. As we begin this holiest of weeks, facing both the shadow of the cross and the glory of Easter, we intercede for the world and for ourselves and give thanks, especially for the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church of Jesus Christ and our part in it, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our country, Canada, and for every nation, especially Ukraine, for regional and local governments, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for those who are suffering We name them before you.
for those in any need, trouble, sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we name them before you. For those who mourn, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of war and unspeakable atrocity, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious death has redeemed us. Hear us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Make us and all thy forgiven servants to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. All praise to thee, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, everybody say, Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. By all means, exchange the peace. Please be seated. Last year, I had the idea that maybe this was one Sunday we would not celebrate the Eucharist because in a sense, the whole week is a Eucharistic feast and it comes to the fore on Maundy Thursday. This hasn't been um, one of the great services, big services in this congregation. I hope that will change. I hope that will change. If you can make it out this Thursday, please do. But you'll have to drive over to, to St. James. They've invited us to be part of their uh, celebration. And uh, it's one that uh, they have developed over the years to be a very uh, important part of their life. So they've invited, invited us. Um, it's only 20 minutes away from here. It's Williamsford and you just get off the main drag. You can look it up on GPS or something and you'll see there's a road, uh, George Street, that runs parallel to the main road. And that's where this pretty little white church with the graveyard is. Please do consider it seriously. You'll be spiritually rewarded, I assure you. We have invited them to come to be with us on that rather odd service on Wednesday. It's again an evening service. You'll see it, you know, look at the, at the, uh, at the uh, um, emails I've been sending out to you. Everything's there. But that's the service of readings. It lasts about an hour in a darkened church and we hear the lamentations of Jeremiah and then we hear part of a sermon of Augustine of Hippo, one of the great theologians of the Western Church. And he makes comments on Psalm 55 that are very relevant. And in between those readings we hear the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
we hear Jesus speak. It's very powerful. And as each of the readings takes place, we extinguish yet more candles until we're left with the Christ candle and we leave quietly by that. It's a very spiritually deep service. So they're coming here for that. We'll see if they show up and we're going on Thursday the next day to them. But then of course, Good Friday and Easter in each of the congregations as usual. Think it over, pray it over. And I wouldn't be suggesting this to you you know, you trust me after all these years if I thought it was just an idle thing to do, to get over with on Good Friday. It's very powerful. It will change you. Okay. Now we go out into the world in peace. And as we do, please stand and I'll offer a prayer for you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that these, your disciples, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ride on, ride on in majesty and lowly pomp. Ride on to die. The Father on his sapphire throne expects his own anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty I call the tribes, Hosanna, cry. Thy humble beast pursues his road with palms and scattered garments strewn. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, your triumphs now begin, our captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the winged squadrons of the sky look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, thy last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father on his sapphire throne expects his own anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow thy meek head to mortal pain, then take, O oh God, thy power and reign. My brothers and sisters, let us go in peace. Let us bear his cross with him. <laughs>